I see so many internal consultants, internal data scientists that are so enamored with the science of what they're doing and the technology of the data engineering that they completely ignore the end need state of what they're trying to solve. In fact, they haven't even had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with their end users to really understand what their problems and what their challenges are. And so what we try to do first and foremost is look at places where people are already making decisions. Look at those processes that they use and the gaps either in the data they have to make it or the amount of time and effort it takes them to get to that point. And start by simply removing the friction of that process, which is why almost every successful implementation has some form of business intelligence or BI up front because it requires that to just get the data up and ready. And just getting the people the data gets them excited. I've never met anybody down to the most um, great creative in all my time at NBCU or in my past 20 years at another very highly creative company before I got there where some I, I had a creative look at me and say, no, please don't give me any information to help me make a better product. I've never seen that happen. Most people like to be self-driven. So we like to think about it as a data-informed culture. All right, how do we make sure the information you need is available to make the best decision possible? And how do we augment that at every opportunity we get? And then getting in front of the people that actually already support those decision makers. These people know the business, they know the product, they've been tasked with assisting these creatives, these producers, for as long as there's been television. Um, they're constantly looking for better information that they can help. And so we try to work with them. How do we automate those reports you were spending 10 hours, 20 hours a week producing? And then by taking that friction out of their process, then we integrate in normalization. Oh, by the way, now, as you're thinking about making decisions, let's look at what's normal or not normal in this context so you don't get stuck with a recency bias or some other kind of observational bias that sits in there. Then we'll start putting, all right, Here's the signal detection of where you should look at why maybe things weren't badly. Now let me help you understand where, if this continues, where they're likely to go, which goes into the predictive analytics. Um, and so that's been our common core as we move through it. It typically starts with somebody having a pain point that we're just trying to help them remove with the data. And then that gives us the opportunity to move it to more of the advanced states. We kind of think about it um, the same way I would from a new business, which is, did you use it? Um, some of our visualization tools are a good example of this, where we look at the number of users and we track it. For example, we, Domo is one of our main visualization tools that we use. We have a Domo dashboard that visualizes people that are using Domo, right? That I see every week. How are we doing with our adoption rates? How often are they using it? What are they using the most? What are they looking at? What are they not looking at? Um, and we think about that in a lot of ways. As we release, we have a product, a product on content efficacy that we patented called um, Kronos, which actually looks at minute by minute retention across a program level to understand and normalize our people sticking around for the content. Uh, we look at adoption rates for that. How many people are using it? How many minutes are being consumed? What programs are being consumed? If people aren't using it and they don't like it, then we're not doing what we should be doing. If we're really doing what we should be doing, our products should become scalable and used on a broader base, which is, I think, one of the key parts. If you want to know if you're in a data culture, don't look at the ad hoc demands on your team so much as look at the adoption of the tools you're putting in the processes and the daily plans every day. And so that's really where our end state goal is. We'll, we'll ad hocs will live every day, right? They'll always be there, but can we put tools in people's hands that help them make the decisions. And if you want to know if it's helping, are they using it, right? And for me, that's, that's our biggest benchmark.